There we go. <laughs> Good morning. And welcome. I am Sister Winnie said we don't know who you're saying good morning to. <laughs> Come on. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, Facebook. The message this morning is quite simple. He is risen. I am Pastor Dan Walker. This is the New Bethel Baptist Church in Framingham, Mass. And this is our Resurrection Sunday message. As always, to read our scriptures is Sister Wendy. The, um, the sermon topic that I gave our beloved deacon was the Magnificent Seven. Um, it's not quite accurate. We're, we're dealing with He is Risen this morning. <laughs> but the script, but the, um, we're going to have Sister Wendy read the scripture. Sister Wendy's? Good morning. Um, I'll be reading the Magnificent Seven. You can find that in Luke um, 23rd, um, verse 34. Father, forgive, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You can find it in Luke 23rd, 43. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You can find it in John 19, verse 25. Woman, behold thy son. You can also find in Mark 15, verse 34. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? John 19, verse 28. I thirst. In John 19, verse 30. It is finished. Luke 23rd. Um, verse 45, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Wendy. Take, do me a favor. Take that mic with you and move it right over to there out of the shot. Thank you. <laughs> we, we, we versatile here in, in New Bethel. We just do what we need to do. Can you turn it off? Can you see how to turn it off? Those two switches, yeah, in the back, those two switches, just, both of them just hit them the other way. You, you, you got it, there's one, there you go. I heard it shut off. Heavenly Father, we thank you for right now. We thank you for all that you've done, and now we ask that you hide me behind your cross and allow your spirit to go forward and your message to be clear to all your people. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the, I don't want to say the weirdest, but this is certainly a different Resurrection Sunday morning. God has had enough of the foolishness. This is the day when folk who never show up to church except for weddings and funerals pile into the church in their best finery and their most expensive stuff, stuff they're going to be paying for for the next six months to show how holy they are to come and let God see them in his house. And God said, enough of the nonsense. Amen. Amen. Enough of the nonsense. Amen. So I'd like everybody to know that, yes, the doors of New Bethel Baptist Church are open, and yes, we are in compliance. <laughs> we just have a couple of folk here, just so I wouldn't be lonely. <laughs> what 
I'd love to know is how come four people, three people, can raise an offering of $400? That's what I want to know. And we get this whole church filled with 75, 80 people and come up with $3.75. <laughs> well, enough of that. <laughs> uh, we just had the seven last words read. And she did it so beautifully. And what is going on, as we talked about last week, was that Jesus the Christ was hanging on the cross. For those of you who are concerned about this, let me be clear. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is who he was. Christ is who he is. So it's not Jesus Christ as it would be Pastor Dan Walker. It's Jesus the Christ. If you're going to use that, it's Emmanuel. It's Yeshua HaMashiach. He doesn't care how you call him. All you, he cares is that you do. He's been on the cross. He has breathed his last. He gave up his ghost. They brought him down because an hour was getting and nobody could be on the cross during Passover. So they bring him down. And to make sure that the two thieves that were crucified with him were dead, they broke his bone. They broke the two thieves' bones. But when they come to the body of Christ, they decided not to break his bones, but they wanted to make sure he was dead, so they pierced him in the side. They didn't know this, but this was so that the scripture to be fulfilled that not one bone in his body would be broken. Amen. Out of his side came a mixture of blood and water. Medical doctors will tell you that this is a phenomenon that comes from a broken heart. They bring his body down. Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate and says, give me the body. Pilate says, whatever. He don't care. He's washed his hands of the whole matter. There's a borrowed tomb Jesus has taken to. I find it interesting to understand that all these things are going into place. Jesus is placed in a borrowed tomb. When you borrow something, you expect to give it back. I don't know anybody since I've been around that has ever been placed in a borrowed grave. As a matter of fact, the cemeteries make sure that grave is paid for before the body goes in it. In full, right? <laughs> Ain't nothing borrowed about the tombs in today's age. There's nothing borrowed about the grave sites in today's age. It's a permanent arrangement. Christ was placed in a borrowed tomb. Why? Because he wasn't going to stay there. The Bible reports in what we call the Apostles' Creed that Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross, was buried, and then descended into Hades. After three days, he arose. Amen. And today is the day that we celebrate his arising. Amen. In Luke chapter 24, if I were to have a sermon topic it's three little words that mean everything to me and I pray to you he is risen Amen. starting at verse 24 in chapter 1 
chapter 24, verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women came with them to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. We know now that that spice, those spices, was about 75 pounds of spices that was paid for. Uh, I think if I, I don't know if I reported this, but let me report it now. The cost of such spices right now, if you were to buy them, would be between a hundred fifty and two hundred thousand dollars. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid, bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Amen. Oh, Lord, that right there will pre each. Amen. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why are you going to the gin joints, to the bar rooms. Why are you going to the speakeasies to find your life mate? Trying to find a diamond in a pigsty. Yeah. Trying to buy a Lincoln Town car at the Renault dealership. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Yeah. He is not here. And boy, we know that because some of you have been guilty of picking up some folk in those places and bringing them home thinking they're going to be the one. <laughs> thinking they are Mr. Right. At best, they're Mr. Right now. At worst, they're Mr. Right this minute. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Amen. He is not here. He wasn't in the gin joint. He wasn't in the bar room. He wasn't at the speakeasy. That's not where you're going to find your diamond. You're not going to find the Lord Jesus Christ. If I could, as a matter of fact, it was suggested that I go and find a cemetery and find an open tomb and stand in front of it as an illustration to point out to you that just as this tomb is empty, when, they, when the two women went to the tomb, they found nothing. He is not here. He is risen. But remember how he spoke to you when he was in Galilee. Oh, yeah. See, I'm doing this for a reason. The Holy Spirit is dealing with me on this. Remember how he spoke to you in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Remember how someone told you, perhaps it was your mother, perhaps it was your father. Somebody told you, you're not going to find what you're looking for there. Because it's not there. All you're going to find there is misery and heartache and shame. Lose a whole lot of money. Remember we talked about last night, last week, that sin costs. Come home that night, no money, no nothing in your pocket, maybe a ticket for driving drunk. Nowadays, they don't even give you tickets. They just run you behind on in. He said, remember his words. And when they, returned to the, when they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and all to the rest, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, the Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them. Where was the men? Oh, my Lord, that'll preach too. Where was the men? Amen. The 11 disciples were somewhere else. They should have been at the tomb. Amen. They should have been with Jesus while he was on the cross. Where was the men? Why does always got to be the women? 
Oh, Lord, I don't know what to say about this age. I don't know what we can do because it's still going on nowadays. You look at your average church, where are the men? They're <laughs> coming in now. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I'm telling you, these things must be Amen. as it is written. Amen. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, mother of James, and the other women with him who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed like idle tales, and they did not believe them. Oh, my Lord, Heavenly Father, how could we start yelling and, and complaining about Thomas? How could we start saying that doubting Thomas? And the Bible reports that when Mary and the other women told the disciples, the apostles, what they had found, they didn't believe them. Why didn't they believe them? Was it because that women weren't all that valuable? Was it because their word wasn't, wasn't raised up, wasn't important? Let me tell you something, ladies. You are valuable. You keep talking to us hard-headed men. Please keep saying a few things in our head. Eventually, some of it will get through. Amen. Because <laughs> you speak the truth in love. You tell us what we need to know even when we don't want to hear it. You try to pour into us that what God has placed on your heart and some of us just hold our necks stiff, our heads held high in stupidity. Amen. The Bible reports that the women told the apostles and they did not believe them. Amen. But Peter, <laughs> but Peter, Again, Peter, Mr. Deny me three times, Mr. Cut off the ear, Mr. Uh, no one will leave you, but I, uh, Mr. Wash my whole body, not just my feet, but Peter arose and ran to the tomb and stooping down saw the linen clothes lying by themselves and he departed marveling to himself at what had happened oh my goodness this is the day this morning when we celebrate the fact that the tomb was empty this is the day this morning when we understand that death was conquered because the tomb was empty why was the tomb empty? Because Jesus the Christ was not there. He had risen. Amen. And because he had risen, I will rise. You will rise. The women who were at the tomb will rise. All those who trust and believe in him will rise. Amen. The tomb was empty. Death had been defeated. Oh, let's go back a little bit. Imagine the scene in hell. Imagine the devil in hell with his people saying, is he up on the cross yet? Yeah, yes, master. They just put him up on the cross. Well, we got him now. He going to die because nobody comes off the cross alive. You need to understand something. When you get into this walk, you ain't getting into this walk to come out alive. There is no Grammys. There is no Emmys. There is no Academy Award for Best Performing Preacher. Amen. The end of this road is death. Amen. But the gift of God Life is eternal life. Amen. You need to understand that this was all foretold. He said, destroy this body, and in three days I'll raise it. They mocked him. They thought they were talking about a physical building. Amen. The ecclesia, the church, yeah. the government has saw fit not to declare churches essential. Whatever. The ecclesia, the body of believers, the people, we are essential. Amen. And we will continue to do the work of God as we see fit, as God blesses us Amen. to see fit. Amen. And if the church, the physical building is closed by some government edict, 
it still will not shut down God's people. Amen. If we have to worship back in the houses like we used to do, amen. We will do it if we have to worship in our cars, if we have to go out into the woods someplace and find a tree to stand around and worship the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. We will do it because we are the people. The church is not a building. You can close the door all you want to. God will still get the glory. And if no politician will proclaim the church essential, I will proclaim the church essential. The ecclesia will not be closed by a government edict. And Satan now is relaxing because Christ is on the cross. Satan now is drinking up or smoking up or shooting up. They got two or three little demons around doing whatever they do. And Satan is sitting down having a good old time. And all of a sudden he hears a knock. He said, what? Say, who is it? Say, you know doggone well who it is. Open this door. As a matter of fact, never mind, I'm coming in anyway. You got something that belongs to me. You got something that is holding my people back. I have come down to take back what you and I are supposed to have in the first place. Give me them keys. How dare you think you can kill me? No man take my life except I lay it down. And if you paid attention, which you never do, devil, because you're stupid, you'd understand that when I said into my father's hand, I commend my spirit, you couldn't touch it no way. Thank you, Lord. Give me them keys. Hallelujah. Comes back up. The morning. The tomb is empty. On the road to Aramaeus. There were two men traveling on that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they walked to, and they talked together of all the things which has happened, what had just happened. And so it was while they conversed and reasoned and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but behold their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Ah, uh, why? Because everything that happens, happens for a reason. Amen. When Jesus asked his disciples, whom do men say I am? It wasn't because Jesus didn't know. He was trying to find out what the disciples believed. Amen. What the disciples knew. And when one of them said, well, some say you are John. Amen. He said, well, what do you say I am? Amen. He said, you to Christ. <laughs> he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and you are sad? And then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things which have happened here in these days? Meaning, where have you been, under a rock? <laughs> well, no, I've been in a tomb, but that's not important right this second. <laughs> yeah. He said to them, What things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet in mighty, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned and crucified. Understand that even the strangers knew who was behind what had happened. Amen. He said, how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. Understand something. We as Americans, we as Christians, we do not condemn the Chinese people. 
they did not cause this virus. This was not made in their kitchens. The Chinese people are not the problem. The American people are not the problem. The problem is the rulers. The problem is those who have charge over us who are not living up to the, con to the commission that God has placed them in. Amen. That's how this virus got out. That's how we're languishing in what we're doing. This is all about the government. Yes. Hallelujah. If not ours, then somebody else's. Jesus the Christ was crucified. Why? Because the chief priests and the rulers went to the, elder, went to the government and said, we need him crucified. That's all you have to do. Amen. What? You crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. But he's done nothing wrong, not the slightest thing. We have no king but Caesar. Well, this is interesting because up to now, all this praise for Caesar has been surprisingly lacking. But we turn to Rome to sentence Nazareth. We don't have a law to put a man to death. We need him crucified. That's all you have to do. How our chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned and crucified him. But we were hoping that he was who was he, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things, are hap these things have happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb earlier today astonished us when they did not find his body. And they came saying that they had seen a vision of an angel who said he was alive. Amen. We're in the presence of angels all the time. You need to be mindful of what the scripture said. Be careful, for some have entertained angels Amen. unaware. Yes, hallelujah. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Hey, check it out. If you remember what the prophets had said, you would understand that the story is not ending with him being up on the cross. The story is not ending with him being placed in the tomb. If you had paid attention to what the prophets had said, you'd understand that the story is just beginning. That ought not the Christ have to suffer these things and to, en to enter into his glory. In other words, how many times have you heard it said, no cross, no crown. Amen. Jesus had to be up on the cross. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. In the beginning, the Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them the things that all the scriptures had said concerning himself. We know all the things. He's Prince of Peace, the mighty consular, Amen. the man of constant sorrow. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the risen. Amen. We know all the things that were said to him. Why are you not serving him? Why have you put your lives in hands of people who don't give two kitties about who you are? Amen. Why are you hanging out with people that all they want to see is your worst side? Amen. There's something wrong with you when you don't associate yourself with people who are good and who are honest. There's something wrong when people come to you and all they want to see is your nakedness. 
All they want to see is you and your sin. All they want to see is you drunk, you high, you stoned out of your mind. There's something wrong when you hang out with people like that. tomb is empty for you. Amen. The tomb is empty for me. Yes, Lord. The tomb is empty. He is not there. He is risen so that you can rise up out of the filth. You can rise up out of the tomb that you are in. You can rise up and live eternally. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he is not there. He's risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am Pastor Dan Walker. This is New Bethel Baptist Church, 11 Beach Street in Framingham, Mass. This has been our Resurrection Sunday morning. You'll see us on Facebook. If you want to send a comment, you can comment on the, on the Facebook. Or you can comment on YouTube. If you want to send a donation to this ministry, you can do it either by Cash App. My Cash App phone number is 781-367-1338. Uh, if you want to just send, you can send it to 11 Beach Street, Framingham, Mass, 01702. And then put down whatever ministry you want for outreach or for our, our general operations, whatever. I promise you the money will get where it's supposed to get. Amen. Tune in next Sunday. Lord, say the same. We'll be here bringing the word of God, and we'll continue to be here throughout the week. Look for different streams at Danver39 in, on the YouTube page or for Daniel Walker on Facebook. Thank you, and have a continue to have a great resurrection day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hmm? What? No song. I can't play a song because they'll, 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 they'll... Huh? It's okay. It's okay? Okay. Yeah, play a song. <laughs> Yeah, play a song. Play a song. Oh, okay, then play a song. Are we still on later? Yeah. Okay. Play a song. This song it doesn't have any copyright issues. Go ahead, play it. <laughs> While we pray, we'll take up the offering, which I think we've already done for the most part. <laughs> but we want to give Sister Wendy a chance to give, <laughs> and Deacon Tone a chance to give. Give you something to give. Give, give you something to give. <laughs> oh, she needs an envelope. Yes. God will supply all that you need in his, in his glory. Bless Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.